All right, uh, section 3.7 is on elasticity of demand. So we have three things to look at in this section. Number one is we need to be able to find the elasticity. Elasticity. Elasticity of demand. We want to characterize demand in terms of elasticity. And finally, we want to characterize revenue. in terms of demand. No, oh, not demand, but elasticity. <clears throat> so, I'm going to give you the elasticity function here, and we're going to go through that. And then before we jump into the example, we're going to just flip the page over and talk a little bit about where this function comes from. So for a demand function, d of x, this is quantity demanded, the elasticity, actually, yeah, the elasticity, e of x, is negative x times d prime of x over d of x. And specifically our elasticity function measures how demand responds to a change in price. So uh, if you've printed this out yourself and not double-sided, just go ahead and flip to the very back page here. And we're just going to kind of walk through very briefly where that function comes from. So if Q is our demand function, right, is our quantity demanded, then delta X over X is percent, percent change in price. So Q, of de Q equals D of X is demand based on price. Price being x. Delta x over x is percent change in price. Delta y, or delta q over q is percent change, percent, not British, change in demand. And we set up delta Q over Q divided by delta X over X. And when we simplify this, we end up with X over Q times delta Q over delta X. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we know delta Q and delta X are change in, change in demand and change in price. So if we then take a limit as delta x goes to 0 of x over q times delta q over delta x, well this x over q is not going to change when the change in x changes, so we can pull that outside, x over q. And so we have the limit, and just as we did back in chapter two, or chapter one, we're going to redefine this as h goes to zero. Now, delta q is nothing more than d of x plus delta x minus d of x. 
So this becomes d of x plus h minus d of x using our little substitution, delta x for h, all over h. Well, we know what this is. That's supposed to be a d there. We know what this is. This is the limit of the difference quotient, and so this limit is the derivative. So that means that we have x over q times d prime of x. Well, q is d of x. And demand goes down over time. which is why our elasticity function that we have is negative. So you can think of this as our elasticity measures the ratio of the percent change in demand to the percent change in price as your change in price shrinks to zero. And we know as we take that limit, we're really looking at what's the ratio of demand, what's the percentage of demand wanted when delta x is not changing. So at this specific price x, how much do people actually demand that product or service? That's what elasticity measures. And it comes from this little derivation of derivatives. So if we flip back over, we have our function, we're going to start this example now. So we have demand for DVD rentals at Blockbuster, rest in peace Blockbuster, in Mission Valley, can be described by the following function. Q, which is our demand, equals 120 minus 2x. So the first thing we're going to do is find our elasticity function. So I'm going to do that up here. So we need d prime of x. To find elasticity, d prime of x is negative 2. So that means e of x equals negative x times negative 2 over 120 minus 2x. So e of x equals 2x over 120 minus 2x or x over 60 minus x. Now you will want to simplify your elasticity functions as much as you can when you're working them and only make things easier. So now in part B, find elasticity at x equals 2 and 4 and interpret. So E of 2 equals 2 over 60 minus 2, which is 2 over 58 which equals 1 over 29. So what elasticity measures, as we said, is how demand responds to price. And our change in x, our demand is always looked at in terms of its change in price. So when price is changed, by 1%, oh, pen is going to die. So as price changes by 1%, Our demand changes by 1 over 29%. And when we finish this example, we're going to really talk about what this means for the company or person selling the good or service, 
but that's what we're looking at. So your elasticity measures change in price by percentage because it measures, as we looked at the back of the sheet, percent change in price. So every 1% change, the demand changes by 1 over 29%. And then for E of 4, <coughs> this is 4 over 60 minus 4, or 2 over 27. And again, this means exactly what it did up here. For a 1% change in price, demand changes by 2 over 27 percent. So in part C now we're finding the change in price of a rental when, or not the change in price, we're finding the price of a rental when our elasticity is 1, <clears throat> and then we're going to talk about what that means. So we want elasticity equal 1, so x over 60 minus x equals 1, and then we're just solving this, it means 60 minus x equals x, or 2x equals 60, so x equals $30 is our price. And so based on our interpretations here, this means that at $30, a 1% change in price will change demand by 1%. And I'm going to turn the page over. So 1% change in price. will change demand by 1%. So when your elasticity is 1, it becomes a very important benchmark for economics, and we're going to discuss that more in detail, but let's finish up the problem. So part D is to find the total revenue. So, what's happening with my papers? Freaking. So total revenue. is price times the quantity or units. Well that means R of X is going to be X times Q. Q is our quantity. So R of X equals 120X minus 2x squared. So that's our total revenue. In part E, it asks us to maximize the revenue. So maximize, that's what we did in the last couple sections, finding the absolute max. So we take our derivative, r prime. We get 120 minus 4x. We set this equal to 0. We get 4x equals 120 where x equals $30. Now we can do a quick justification with a second derivative test. r double prime of x is negative 4. So r double prime of 30 equals negative 4, which is less than 0, which means we're concave down, which means that this is an absolute max. Now, remember that the $30 was when our elasticity was 1.
So our maximum revenue occurs when our elasticity is 1. And as it turns out, this is going to be true all the time. So on the next page, we have some relationships to talk about between revenue and elasticity. elasticity. So number one, when revenue is increasing, then elasticity is going to be, whoops, not less than zero, less than one. And we say demand is inelastic, meaning that if you change the price, the demand isn't going to change. Maybe it changes a little bit, but very small, right? Less than one. And so your elasticity kind of tells you if you can raise prices or if you can decrease prices and not hurt your revenue. And so inelastic goods are very important. We're going to talk about inelastic goods in a little bit. The second thing is when revenue is decreasing. So when revenue is decreasing, then our elasticity, E of X, is greater than zero. And demand is elastic. I did zero again. Why do I keep doing zero? It's greater than one. So we're always looking at one. Less than one greater than one. So when you have an elastic good, it means that when you change your price, if you're the good or service provider, when you change that price, your demand is going to change with it. So sometimes that's good if you're decreasing then your elasticity, you need it to be inelastic, or you need it to be elastic. Let's say that again. So when your revenue is decreasing, you need your demand to be elastic, because that means you can either increase or decrease your price to make your revenue change, to make your demand change. Whereas if you are increasing, or if you're decreasing, and you have an inelastic good, that means no matter what you do, you're going to keep decreasing until you hit a certain point, the minimum of the, of the uh, revenue. And then the third is what we showed at the end of the last example, is revenue is maximized when our elasticity equals one. And we call this unitary elasticity. And so this is what we saw in the last example you will always get your maximum revenue when your elasticity is one because that means you can increase if you increase your price your demand is going to decrease by the same amount and if you decrease your price your demand will increase by that same percentage that you increased by or decreased by so when it's at this perfect unitary elasticity you have your maximum revenue because you've found the perfect balance between the price that gets you the most money and the price that the consumer is willing to pay. So I want to talk a little bit about inelastic goods. And I want you to think about if you can find or think of any inelastic goods. Any 
inelastic goods or services for that matter. So inelastic goods or services are things that the average person or the regular person cannot not have. So if something's inelastic, now you may consider something inelastic, like maybe you really love, I don't know, your favorite brand of what chips and you say okay no matter what price these chips are I'm gonna buy them because I love them so much that's not true in elasticity that's inelastic in essence to you personally but when we're talking about inelastic goods we're talking about goods or services that everyone cannot go without so I'll start you off one that's very specific to you all college tuition This is a pretty inelastic good or service. Now, I put a star here because you, as a college student, agree with this. But if you're not in college, it's not inelastic to you. So this is inelastic to a lot of people, but not to everyone. But I'm still going to use it as an example. So pause the video here, see if you can come up with a couple examples. And I'm going to go through a few that you should be thinking about. Okay. So the big one, gasoline. We see gasoline prices increase all the time. You don't stop buying gas when they increase, you just get angry and get annoyed. But you have to have gas to drive your car, you have to have your car to drive to work or school, so it is inelastic. And it's why in San Diego we, they can get away with what they call the summer blend and the winter blends. They say they put additives, but our climate here in San Diego is pretty regular. It doesn't change that much. But we know that when they switch to those blends, the prices jump up. I think about when gas prices are, you know, 4, 4.15, 4.30, we still buy the gas. We're annoyed and we're upset and we try and drive less, but it doesn't mean we're going to stop buying gas. Another one along that same vein of idea are utilities. So if you pay your electric bill, you know if the electric price goes up, you're going to keep paying the electric bill. You have to have it. Uh, a big one is medicine or insulin. I'm going to use insulin as an example, specific example. If you're sick, if you're diabetic and you need insulin, you can't not have your insulin. So you buy this no matter what the price is. And there's a huge issue in the world right now about how expensive insulin is. Insulin's insanely expensive, especially here in the United States. And there's some people that forego gasoline and utilities just to get their insulin because they literally will die if they don't have it. It can cost them, you know, upwards of $500 to $1,000 a month sometimes just for this. Whereas in places like the UK, insulin's a lot cheaper. So this is a big one. And another one that we think of or don't think of is groceries. Food. Now I'll put a star here as well for a different reason. So groceries you can consider to be inelastic because you have to buy food. So you will buy food regardless of the price. Now, I'll put a star because let's say, you know, your favorite bag of potato chips that we talked about earlier finally gets over $6. And you say, okay, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to try something new. So that keeps groceries relatively in check because of competition. It's one of the reasons that insulin and gasoline and utilities is hard to keep in check because if you think of the difference, you don't like how expensive your chips are now. You go to a different brand. 
if you don't like how expensive your electric bill is, there's nowhere else to go but sdg and &E. That's just who you have. Same thing with your trash utilities or your water utilities. A lot of times there's only one option. Cable, internet. Internet is not technically classified as a utility, but you could think of it as. Usually, you know, you live somewhere, you can get one, maybe two options. And while I don't know this for sure, there's been a lot of speculation that internet providers agree to have a certain price to make sure that it's in everyone, and by everyone I mean the company's benefits, the provider's benefits, to make the most money. Again, don't know that for sure, but you can think of that. So inelastic goods and services are all around us all the time. And you know that they're inelastic because even when they get really expensive, you're still going to buy them, right? If your tuition goes up at the school you're at, you're still going to pay your tuition. Otherwise, you have to drop out of school. Gas prices go up, you're still going to pay for gas. Electric bill goes up, you're still going to pay that electric bill. If you need a prescription and suddenly that prescription doubles in price, you're still going to pay for that prescription. And you always need food. And there's plenty of other examples of inelastic goods or services. So I recommend you try and think of those uh, as you're working through these homework problems. But that is the end of 3.7.